Hi everyone. I am Professor Sung Gwon Myung from the National Cancer Center, Graduate School of Can Science and Policy. Today, this is the uh, class for Medical Terminology 4. Today, I'm going to talk about three systems. The first one is genitourinary system. Key terms. Cortex, outer layer of an organ or body structure. Electrolytes are mineral source such as sodium, potassium, and calcium. Erythropoietin, the abbreviation is EPO. This is the glycoprotein hormone produced by certain cells in the kidney. Libido is a, a sexual desire or drive. Mutus means an opening. Miot means opening. Medulla is inner or central portion of an organ. Mitrition is the discharge of urine. The same word is urination. And nitrogenous waste are products of cellular metabolism that contain nitrogen. Orifice means opening. Percutaneous Per means through, cutane is skin, so percutaneous is the procedure performed through the skin, as in a biopsy. Reflux is backward, urea is the principal nitrogenous and product of protein metabolism, excreted in urine and perspiration. Now I'm going to talk about anatomy and physiology. The urinary system. The male and female urinary systems have similar structures. In the male, however, some of the urinary structures also have reproductive functions. Thus, the genital urinary system includes the urinary system of both the male and female and the reproductive system of the male. The purpose of the urinary system is to regulate extracellular fluids such as plasma, tissue fluid, and lymph of the body by removing a variety of, of harmful substances from plasma while retaining useful products. Harmful substances including nitrogenous waste and excess electrolytes are excreted from the body as urine, while useful products are returned to the blood. Nitrogenous waste are toxic to the body and they must be continuously eliminated or death will occur. Electrolyte concentration must retain fairly constant for proper functioning of nerves, heart, and muscles. The erythropoietin is secreted by the kidneys, which is a hormone that acts on bone marrow to stimulate production of red blood cells when blood oxygen levels are low. This figure shows the urinary structures, including a cross-section of the kidney. And number one is the right kidney. And also you can see the left kidney in the opposite side. And uh, there is uh, adrenal glands on the top of the right kidney, as you can see here. And also you can see the inferior vena cava, the blue one, and the abdominal aorta, uh, red one, and also from the uh, both from the both kidneys, uh, you can see the ureters, and these ureters go down to the urinary bladder, and you can see the ureteral orifice of the back of the urinary bladder, and. Uh, you can see the prostate gland uh, below the uh, urinary bladder in males and urethra urinary meatus. And there are four major types of structures in the urinary system. Two kidneys, two ureters, one bladder and one urethra. First, kidneys. It's about the size of a fist. They are located in the abdominal cavity, slightly above the waistline. 
because they lie outside of the peritoneum, their location is said to be retroperitoneal. A concave med medial border gives the kidney its bean-like shape, and the renal cortex is an outer section. The renal medulla is a middle area that contains portions of the microscopic filtering units of the kidney called nephrons. Hilum. Near the medial border, an opening through which the renal artery enters and the renal vein exists, the kidney. The renal artery carries blood that ca contains waste products to the nephrons for filtering. If the waste products are removed, blood leaves the kidney by way of the renal vein. The renal pelvis is a hollow chamber to which waste material in the front of the urine uh, passes, uh, which is an enlarged funnel-shaped extension of the ureter when the ureter merges with the kidney. The ureter is a slender tube about 10 to 20 inches long that carries urine in peristaltic waves to the bladder. The ureter passes behind the bladder and enters its base near the ureteral orifice. The urinary bladder is an expandable hollow organ which acts as a temporary reservoir for urine. When empty, this has small uh, folds called rugi that allow expansion as the bladder fills. The trigon is a triangular area at the base of the bladder, which is delineated by the openings of the ureters and the urethra. The urethra is formed by the base of the trigon, and there is the tube that discharges urine from the bladder. The length is approximately 1.5 inches in women and about 7 to 8 inches in men. In the male, the urethra passes through the prostate gland and the penis. During mictrition, which means urination, urine is expelled through the urethral opening, the urinary meatus. And now I'm going to talk about the nephron. Uh, approximately 1 million nephrons are in the kidney tissue. The nephron is responsible for maintaining homeostasis by continually regulating the amount of water, salts, glucose, urea, and other minerals in blood. Substances are removed by nephrons. For example, nitrogenous waste, including urea, uric acid, creatinine. Creatinine is the end product of protein metabolism. Excess electrolytes and many other products that exceed the amount tolerated by the body. Each nephron includes a renal capsule and a renal tubule. The renal capsule is composed of a tuft of capillaries called the glomerulus and the modified funnel-shaped end of the renal tubule known as Bowman capsule, which encases the glomerulus. A larger afferent arterial carries blood to the glomerulus, and a smaller efferent arterial carries blood from the glomerulus. The difference in the size of these vessels provides the needed pressure to force small molecules out of the blood and into Bowman capsule. This process is non-selective, which means that all small molecules, including those needed by the body as well as waste molecules and the lumen of tubule. Uh, as the efferent arterial passes behind the renal corpuscle, it forms the peritubular capillaries, which allow needed products filtered from the blood in Bowman capsule to re-enter the vascular system. The renal tubule consists of four sections, proximal convoluted tubule, loop of helm, distal tubule and collecting tubule. This figure shows the nephron 
with each associated blood vessels. The kidney is divided into the renal cortex and the renal medulla. In the renal cortex, you can see the number one, the glomerulus and the Bowman capsule. The glomerulus is a kind of vessel. So afferent arteriole goes into the glomerulus and then different arteriole comes out from the glomerulus. And then uh, these, uh, uh, the afferent arteriole goes into the uh, renal artery. Oh no, it's the renal artery. Renal artery goes into the uh, afferent arterial. Okay. And uh, as you can see, the also the, there are several tubers. Like the first one is number six, the proximal convoluted tubule. And uh, the second one is loop of Henle here like this. The loop of Helena is composed of the descending limb and the ascending limb. And then the loop of Helena uh, merges into the, the distal tubule. And the distal tubule changes to the collecting tubule. And also you can see the peritubular capillary uh, and this goes into the renal vein. There are three physiological activities of the nephron during urine production. Filtration, reabsorption, and the secretion. The filtration occurs in the renal corpus where water, electrolytes, sugar, amino acids, and other small molecules are forced from the blood in the glomerulus into Bowman capsule as a result of increased pressure. The fluid that is formed is called filtrate and second one is reabsorption the reabsorption begins as a filtrate passes through the four sections of the tubule the tubule reclaims needed substances from the filtrate and returns them to the body for reuse as a filtrate travels the long and twisted pathway of the tubule most of the water and some of the electrolytes and amino acids are returned to the peritubular capillaries, thus re-entering circulating blood. Lastly, secretion occurs when substances in the capillaries surrounding the distal and collecting tubule secrete ammonia, uric acid, and other substances directly into the tubule, a process that resembles the reabsorption but in the opposite direction. The remaining fluid that enters the collecting tubule is then called urine. This figure shows the mediastinal section of male reproductive structures shown through the pelvic cavity. Here, number one, testis. And number two, scrotum. Number three, seminiferous tubules. And also you can see the epididymis. And number five, these are, this, these are vas deferens. And the vas deferens goes into the seminal vesicle. And as you can see here, ejaculatory duct inside the prostate gland. And you can see the bulbourethral gland. And then the, you can see the urethra. And the urethra is covered by the penis and on the tip of the penis you can see the prepuce and the urethral orifice and glands penis. The purpose of the male reproductive system is to produce, maintain and transport the sperm. The male sex cell required for the fertilization of the egg. It also produces the male hormone testosterone, which is essential to the development of sperm and male secondary sex characteristics. The primary male reproductive organ 
consists of two testes. The singular form is testes. It is located in an external sac called the scrotum. Within the testes, there are numerous small tubes that twist and call to form seminiferous tubules which produce sperm. The testes also secret testosterone which develops and maintains secondary sex characteristics. The epididymis is a single tightly coiled tube lying over the superior surface of each testis. The epididymis stores sperm after it leaves the seminiferous tubules. Uh, this is the first duct through which sperm passes after its production in the testis. Second one is vas deferens. This is the seminal duct or ductus deferens. Tracing the duct upward, the epididymis forms a narrow tube that passes through the inguinal canal into the abdominal cavity. It extends over the top and down the posterior surface of the bladder where it joins the seminal vesicle. The union of the vas, tough vas deferens with the duct from the seminal vesicle forms the ejaculatory duct. The seminal vesicle contains nutrients that support the sperm viability and secretes approximately 60% of the seminal fluid that is ultimately ejaculated during sexual intercourse. The prostate gland is the uh, male reproductive, reproductive system and the ejaculatory duct passes at an angle through the prostate gland, which is a triple lobed organ fused to the base of the bladder. The prostate gland secretes a thin alkaline substance that accounts for about 30% of seminal fluid. Its alkalinity helps protect sperm from the acidic environments of both the male urethra and the female vagina. Bulbourethral glands. There are two P-shaped glands located below the prostate and are connected by a small duct to the urethra. They provide alkaline fluid ne necessary for sperm viability. The penis is the male organ of copulation. This is cylindrical and is composed of erectile tissue that encloses the urethra. The urethra expels both semen and urine from the body. During ejaculation, the sphincter at the base of the bladder closes, which not only stops the urine from being expelled with the semen, but also prevents semen from entering the bladder. The gland's penis is the enlarged tip of the penis. It contains the urethral orifice which is meatus, prepuce or foreskin uh, is a movable hood of skin. It covers the glands penis. Now I'm going to talk about medical word elements. Cyst or basic, they mean bladder. Cystoscope is the instrument used to examine and treat lesions of the bladder and ureters. Glomerul means glomerulus. Glomerulopathy. Pathy means disease, so this means any disease of the renal glomerulus. Lith means stone, so lithotripsy is crushing of a stone. Miat means opening. Nef or rin means kidney. Peritoneum. Pyel. Pyel means renal pelvis. U R U means urine. Ureter. Ureth. Urethra. Androme means male. Balla means glands penis. Epididymis. Orc. Or orc. Orchid, they all mean testes. Prostate, 
means prostate gland. Spermat means sperma, sperm cells. Vas means vessel. Berry means dilated vein. So bericocele is the dilated or enlarged vein of the spermatic cord. Basical means seminal basical. Albumino means albumin. Azot means nitrogenous compounds. Azotemia. Azotemia means the presence of a nitrogenous product, especially urea in the blood. blood. Bacteria means bacteria. Crypt means hidden. So cryptorchidism means the failure of the testis to descend into the scrotum. Gonad means gonad, sex glands. Kali means KAL, potassium. So hypokalemia means abnormally low concentration of pot potassium in the blood. Ketone means ketone bodies, ketone bodies. Noct means night. Nocturia means excessive and frequent urination after going to bed. Oligo means scanty. So oligospermia means temporary or permanent deficiency of spermatozoa in semen. Pi. PY means pus. CIDE means killing. So spermicide means the agent that kills sperm. Genesis means forming. Yesis means abnormal condition. Lithesis means abnormal condition of stones. <clears throat> Ism condition. Spadius means slit or fissure. Urea means urine. Polyurea means excessive formation and excretion of urine. Dia means through. Dialysis is the procedure that uses a membrane to separate and selectively remove substances from a solution. Retro means backward. Pathology. The pathology of the urinary system includes congenital anomalies, infectious diseases, trauma or conditions that secondarily involve the urinary structures, glomerulonephritis, and chronic urinary tract infection. Symptoms specific to urinary disorders are changes in urination pattern or output and dysuria. They are diagnosed by the endoscopic tests, radiological evaluations, and laboratory tests that evaluate renal function. The signs and symptoms of the male reproductive disorders are pain, swelling, erectile dysfunction, and loss of libido. Urology is the branch of medicine concerned with male and female urinary disorders and diseases of the male reproductive system. The urologist is the physician who specializes in the diagnosis and treatment of genital urinary disorders. Pyelonephritis is one of the most common forms of kidney disease, also called kidney infection or complicated urinary tract infection. Bacteria embed the renal pelvis and kidney tissue, often as a consequence of a blood infection that has ascended to the kidney via, via the ureters. When the infection is severe, lesions form in the renal pelvis, causing bleeding. When doing microscopic examination of urine, you can see large quantities of bacteria. This is called bacteriuria. And white blood cells in the urine, they, call, they are called pyuria. And when lesions are present, present uh, renal blood cells, hematuria, they usually acute with uh, symptoms including chills, fever, nausea, and vomiting. First, glomerulonephritis is any condition that causes the glomerular walls to become inflamed. One of the most common causes is a reaction to the toxins given off by pathogenic bacteria, especially streptococci, that have recently infected another part of the body, usually 
the throat. The glomerulonephritis is associated with autoimmune diseases such as systemic lupus erythematosus, polyarthritis, scleroderma, and diabetes. And when the glomerular membrane is inflamed, it becomes highly permeable. Renal blood cells and protein pass through the glomerulus and enter the tubule as urine is being produced. In some cases, protein solidifies in the nephron tubules and forms solid masses that take the shape of the tubules in which they develop. The clinical picture of the glomerulonephritis is hematuria, proteinuria, and red cells cast, along with hypertension, edema, and impaired renal function. Most patients with acute glomerulonephritis uh, associated with the streptococcal infection recover with no residual kidney damage. Second one is nephrolithiasis. These are stones forming in any part of the urinary tract, but most in the kidney. Nephrolithiasis commonly forms when dissolved urine salts begin to solidify. The symptoms? As these stones increase in size, they obstruct urinary structures. As they lodge in the ureters, they cause intense pulsating pain, which is called colic. Hydronephrosis. Because urine is hindered from flowing into the bladder, it flows backward refluxes into the renal pelvis and the tubers, causing them to dilate. As for the treatment, calculi are pulverized using concentrated ultrasound waves or X-rays called shock waves directed at the stones from a machine outside the body, which is called ESWL, extracorporeal shock wave lysotripsy. Here, Corporeal means body, so extracorporeal, outside the body, from the outside the body, shock wave, litho trips, lith means stones, trips means crossing. For excessively large stones or patients who have contraindications for the procedure, the alternative treatment is stone removal through a small incision in the skin, which is called percutaneous nephrolithotomy. This figure shows the kidney stones in the calyces and the ureter, yellow ones. This shows ESWL. You can see the patient with kidney stone lying on the bed, and also there are monitor, there are monitor and ECG. And from the uh, outside, you can see this uh, instrument shock wave generator and this uh, using the shock wave we can crush the kidney stones in the patient the black neck obstruction piano is any blockage of the blood outlet causes an enlarged prostate gland and obstructive masses such as calculi blood clots and tumors. The resulting blood distension may lead to hydronephrosis accompanied by blood infection, which is called cystitis. The patient experiences a need to boil, up, boil but can only boil small quantities at a time. So this is called retention with overflow. For the correction of BNO, there is surgery that relieves or removes the, the obstruction. BPH, this is a very, very common disease. Benign prosthetic hyperplasia. Sometimes it is called nodular hyperplasia or benign prosthetic hypertrophy. BPH is commonly associated with the aging process. 
As the prostate gland enlarges, it decreases the urethral lumen, thus inhibiting complete voiding. Inability to empty the bladder completely may cause cystitis and ultimately nephritis. Surgical removal of the prostate may be necessary. As for the treatment, surgical removal can be done through the perineum, which is called the perineal prostatectomy, and urethra, transurethral resection, TURP, or an abdominal opening above the pubis and directly over the bladder, which is called the suprapubic prostatectomy. This shows the prostatic hyperplasia, PPH, on the right side. Cryptorchidism is a family of the testes to descend into the scrotal sac prior to birth. In many infants born with this condition, the testes descend spontaneously by the end of the first year. If this does not occur, correction of the disorder involves surgical suspension of the testes, which is called orchiopex, in the scrotum. Usually, it is done before the child reaches age 2. Because an inguinal hernia commonly accompanies cryptorchidism, the hernia may be sutured, which is called the hernia rapi at this time. Atian, acute tubular necrosis. The tubular portion of the nephron is injured through a decrease in blood supply or the presence of toxic substances, usually after ingestion of toxic chemical agents. There are two major causes for ATN, ischemia and nephrotoxic injury. Ischemia may be the result of circulatory collapse, severe hypo hypotension, hemorrhage, hemorrhage, dehydration, or other disorders that affect blood supply. The signs and symptoms are scanty urine production, which is called oliguria, and increased blood levels of calcium which is called hypercalcemia. When the tubular damage is not severe, the disorder is reversible. And diagnostic symptomatic and related terms, unurea, un means without, urine, urea means urine, so absence of urine production is unurea. Azotemia is retention of excessive amounts of nitrogenous compounds. Chronic renal failure, CLF, which is renal failure that occurs over a period of years in which the kidneys lose their ability to maintain volume and composition of body fluids with normal dietary intake. This urea is painful or difficult urination. And neurosis is involuntary discharge of urine, which is also called incontinence. Fistula is abnormal passage from a hollow organ to the surface or from one organ to another. Frequency is voiding at frequent intervals. Hesitancy is involuntary delay in initiating urination. Nephrotic syndrome is loss of large amounts of plasma protein, usually albumin, by way of urine due to increased permeability of the glomerular membrane. Nocturia is excessive or frequent urination after going to bed. Oligouria is diminished capacity to form and pass urine so that the end product of met metabolism cannot be excreted efficiently. The urgency is a feeling of the need to avoid immediately. Urolithiasis is the presence of stones in any urinary structure. Williams tumor is one of the tumors uh, rapidly developing malignant neoplasm of the kidney that usually occurs in children. Onorchidism is congenital absence of one or both testes, also called anorchia or anorchism. Aspermia or ospermia is failure to form semen. Balantitis Balanitis is the inflammation of the skin covering the glands penis. Epispadias 
is malformation in which the urethra opens on the dorsum of the penis. Erectile dysfunction is repeated inability to get or keep an erection firm enough for sexual intercourse. Hydrocele is accumulation of serous fluid in a cell-like cavity, especially the testes and associated structures. Hypospadias is developmental anomaly in which the urethra opens on the underside of the penis. Phimosis is stenosis or narrowing of preputial orifice so that the foreskin cannot be retracted over the glands penis. Sterility is inability to produce offspring in the male. Inability to fertilize the ovum. Varicocele is swelling and distension of veins of the spermaticoid. Diagnostic and therapeutic procedures. Terminology. DRE, Digital Rectal Examination. This is a screening test that assesses the rectal wall surface for lesions or abnormally firm areas that might indicate cancer. For example, prostate cancer. Electromyography measures the contraction of muscles. Testicular self-examination, TSE. Endoscopy. Cystoscopy, nephroscopy, ureteroscopy. BUN means blood urea nitrogen. This is a test that determines the amount of urea nitrogen, a waste product of protein metabol metabolism present in a blood sample. CNS, culture and sensitivity. PSA, prostate specific antigen. This is a blood test used to detect prosthetic disorders, especially prosthetic cancer. Semen analysis, urinalysis, UA. Cystography is a radiographic examination of the urinary bladder using a contrast medium. Cystometrography is a procedure that assesses volume and pressure in the bladder at varying stages of filling using saline and the contrast medium introduced into the bladder through a catheter. Cystourethrography, KUB radiography, K kidney, U ureter, B bladder. This is the basic radiographic examination to determine the location, size, and shape of the kidneys in relationship to other organs in the abdominal pelvic cavity. Pyelography, Intravenous pyelography, which is IVP, is a radiographic examination of the ureters and renal pelvis. CT scan, computer tomography scan, nuclear scan, renal scan, ultrasound. Dialysis is the passage of a solute through a membrane. This shows hemodialysis for renal failure patients or chronic renal failure patients. Peritoneal Peritoneal dialysis means removal of toxic substances from the body by perfusing the peritoneal cavity with a warm sterile chemical solution. Peritoneal dialysis Lithotrips especially ESWL, extracorporeal shockwave lysotripsy. This shows peritoneal dialysis to the kidney patient. Circumcision is removal of all or part of the foreskin prefuse of the penis. Nephrolysotomy, removal of a stone from the kidney through a very small incision in the skin. Nephrophexy is the fixation of a floating or mobile kidney. Orchidectomy is removal of one or both testes. Resection of the prostate. Transural 
with section of the prostate, TURP. It's a partial excision of the prostate gland. Urethrotomy is incision of a urethral structure. This figure shows vasectomy and reversal. Pharmacology. There are several drugs used to treat genital urinary disorders. Antibiotics, antidiuretics. Antidiuretics is to reduce, are uh, reduce, are to reduce or control excretion of urine. Antispasmodics decrease spasms in the urethra and bladder by relaxing the smooth muscles. Diuretics promote the excretion of urine. Androgens increase testosterone levels. Anti-impotence agents treat erectile dysfunction. For example, Viagra, Sildenafil, Citrate. Abbreviations AGN, acute glomerulonephritis, ALF, acute renal failure, ATN, PNO, blood and neck obstruction, BPH, benign prosthetic hyperplasia, BUN, blood urea nitrogen, CNS, culture and sensitivity, CATH means catheterization, CISTO means cystoscopy, DRE, digital rectal examination, ED, erectile dysfunction, or emergency department, ESRD, end stage renal disease, ESWL, extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy, GU, genital urinary, HD, hemodialysis, IVP, intravenous pyelography, IVU, intravenous urography, K, potassium as an electrolyte, KUV, kidney ureter bladder radiography. And a sodium or natrium as an electrolyte. PCNL, percutaneous nephrolithotomy. pH is a symbol for degree of acidity or alkalinity. PSA is prostate specific antigen. RP retrograde pyelography. SPGL, specific gravity. TSC, testicular self examination. TURP. Transurethral resection of the prostate for prostatectomy. UA urinalysis. VCUG voiding cystourethrography. Now I'm going to move to the chapter 12 female reproductive system. Key terms. Fulguration is the destruction of tissue using a high frequency electrical current. Genitalia, the sex or reproductive organs visible on the outside of the body. Gestation is the length of time from conception to birth during pregnancy. Glands, this is a small rounded mass or gland like body or erectile tissue at the end of the clitoris and the penis. Lactation is production and release of milk by mammary glands. Orifice is the mouth or entrance or outlet of any anatomic structure. Periperium is time after childbirth that lasts approximately six weeks, during which the, anat the anatomic and physiological changes brought about by pregnancy resolve and the woman adjust to the new or expanded responsibilities of motherhood and non-pregnant life. Viable means capable of sustaining life. Anatomy and physiology. The female, productive, the female reproductive system is composed of internal and external organs of reproduction. The internal organs are ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, Vagina and external genitalia, vulva. Vulva is composed of lab labia minora, labia majora, clitoris, 
and baffling glands. The organs of the female reproductive system are designed to produce ova. Female reproductive cells transport the cells to the site of fertilization, provide a favorable environment for a developing fetus through pregnancy and childbirth, and produce female sex hormones. Hormones play an important role in the reproductive process, with each providing its influence at critical times during preconception, fertilization, and gestation. This figure shows the female reproductive system. A shows the anterior view, and B shows the sagittal section showing organs with the pelvic cavity. Anterior view, you can see the breast, nipple, and ovary, fallopian tube, uterus, and vagina. And figure V shows the ovary, fallopian tube, uterus, cervix, vagina, bathroom gland, perineum, and surrounding organs. There are rectum, anus, and also, you can see the urinary bladder, pubis, urethra, and also you can see the clitoris, labia minora and labia majora. The female reproductive organs are ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, and vagina. First, ovaries. These are almond-shaped glands located in the pelvic cavity, one on each side of the uterus. Each contains thousands of tiny sac-like structures called graphene follicles, each of which contains an ovum. The term ovulation. When an ovum matures, the mature follicle moves to the surface of the ovary, ruptures, and releases the ovum. This is called ovulation. After ovulation, the empty follicle is transformed into a very different looking structure called the corpus luteum, which is a small yellow mass that secretes estrogen and progesterone. The corpus luteum ultimately degenerates at the end of a non-fertile cycle. The hormones estrogen and progesterone influence the menstrual cycle and menopause, prepare the uterus for implantation of the fertilized egg, help to maintain pregnancy, and promote growth of the placenta, also play an important role in development of secondary sex characteristics. This figure shows the anterior view of female reproductive system. The developing follicles, follicles are shown in the sectioned left cavity. So, number one, ovary and you can see fimbri and the ov ovum and goes through the fallopian tube and moves and then the uh, ovum goes to the inner wall of the uterus endometrium and you can see the in the ovary you can see the mucho follicle and graphene follicles and here first graphene follicles and uh, after ovulation you can the follicle change to the corpus luteum yellow mass and also uh, usually the after ovulation the ovum meets with the sperm in this fallopian tube. So the fertilization of ovum occurs in here. You can see the cervix vagina. The fallopian tube. Two fallopian tubes extend laterally from superior angles of the uterus. Fimbri are finger-like projections that create wave-like current peristalsis in fluid surrounding ovary to move the ovum into the uterine tube. If the egg unites with the spermatozoon, 
in here, fallopian tube, the male reproductive cell, fertilization takes place. If conception or fertilization does not occur, the ovum disintegrates within 48 hours and is discharged through the vagina. Uterus contains and nourishes the embryo from the time the fertilized egg is implanted until the fetus is born. The uterus is a muscular, hollow, inverted, pear-shaped uh, pear structure located in the pelvic area between the blood and rectum. The uterus is normally in a position of anti-flexion, which means bent forward. The uterus consists of three parts, the fundus, the upper rounded part, and the body, which is the central part, and the cervix, also called the neck of the uterus or cervix uteri, and the inferior constructed portion that opens into the vagina. Vagina is a muscular tube that extends from the cervix to the exterior of the body. The vagina consists of folds of a mucous membrane that give the organ an elastic quality. During sexual excitement, the vaginal orifice is lubricated by secretions from baffling glands. The vagina serves as the organ of sexual intercourse and receptor of semen. semen. The vagina discharges menstrual flow, also acts as a passageway for the delivery of the fetus. The clitoris is located anterior to the vaginal orifice. It is composed of erectile tissue that is richly innervated with sensory endings that is similar in structure to the penis in the male, but it is smaller and has no urethra. The area between the vaginal orifice and the anus is known as the perineum. The episiotomy. During childbirth, the obstetrician may decide to surgically incise the area to enlarge the vaginal opening for delivery, which is called episiotomy. Memory glands for the breast. Although they are present in both sexes, they function only in females. Memory glands are not directly involved in reproduction, but become important after delivery. The biological role is to secrete milk for the nourishment of the newborn, a process called lactation. They begin to develop during puberty as a result of periodic stimulation of the ovarian hormones, estrogen and progesterone, and they are fully developed by age 16. The estrogen is responsible for the development of adipose tissue, which enlarges the size of the breast until they reach full maturity. Breast size is primarily determined by the amount of fat around the glandular tissue, but it is not indicative of functional ability. Each breast is composed of 15 to 20 lobules of milk producing glands that are drained by a lactiferous duct, which opens on the tip of the raised nipple. The areola is a border of slightly darker skin circling the nipple. During pregnancy, the breast enlarge and remains so until lactation ceases at menopause breast tissue begins to atrophy. This figure shows the structure of memory glands. Here, and in, uh, from the, the upper uh, figure, you can see the nipple, adipose tissue, lactiferous duct, memory lobule, and here, you can see also adipose tissue, breast tissue, lymph vessel, nipple, areola, and internal mammary lymph node, and subclavicular lymph nodes. The initial menstrual period, menarche, occurs at puberty, about age 12, 
and continues approximately 40 years except during pregnancy. The duration of the menstrual cycle is approximately 28 days during which time several phases occur. This shows the changes in the menstrual cycle. Days 1 to 5, this is called the menstrual phase. And days 6 to 14, this phase is ovulatory phase. And days 15 to 28 is the post-ovulatory phase. This figure shows the menstrual cycle. As you can see here, uh, the days 1 to 5, the menstrual phase, you can see the uh, rising level of hormones here and the ovum develops in the ovary. So the first uh, initial stages, they are called graphene follicles and uh, in the ovulatory phase, the endometrium repairs and uh, around the 14, days 14, the ovulation occur. This means the ovary comes up from the ovary. The ovum comes up from the ovary. And then if uh, uh, conception or fertilization doesn't occur, then this the uh, follicles change to the corpus luteum and breaking down of ovum. And also in the endometrium, you can see the endometrium builds up in the post ovulatory phase. And then the endometrium breaks down. Pregnancy. The uterus changes its shape, size, and consistency. It increases greatly in size and muscle mass and houses the growing placenta, which nourishes the embryo pitus and expels the baby after gestation. To prepare and serve as the birth canal at the end of pregnancy, the vaginal canal elongates as the uterus rises in the pelvis. The mucosa thickens secretions increase and the vascularity and elasticity of the cervix and vagina become more pronounced. Average pregnancy, which is gestation, is about 9 months and are followed by childbirth, parturition. The embryo is the product of conception up to, third, up to the third month of pregnancy. The fetus is the unborn offspring from the third month to the time of birth. Also, it causes enlargement of the breast sometimes to the point of pain. Toward the end of gestation, the myometrium begins to contract weakly at irregular intervals. At this time, the full-term fetus is usually positioned head down within the uterus. Now, I'm going to talk about labor and childbirth. The physiological process by which the fetus is expelled from the uterus is labor or childbirth. There are three stages of labor. The first is the stage of dilation, which begins with the uterine contractions and terminates when there is complete dilation of the cervix, about 10 centimeters. And in the second stage, this is the stage of expulsion, which is the time from complete cervical dilation to birth of the baby. In the last, in the last stage, there is the placental stage or afterbirth. It begins shortly after childbirth when the uterine contractions discharge the placenta from the uterus. This figure shows the sequence of labor and childbirth. First, labor begins, membranes intact. Two, effacement of cervix, which is now partially dilated. Three, when head reaches flow of pelvis, it rotates. Four, 
extension of the cervix allows the head to pass through. 5. Delivery of head. Head rotates to realign itself with body. And 6. This shows the delivery of shoulders. And then the delivery of infant is complete. The uterus begins to contract. And 8. The umbilical cord is cut and external massage to uterus continues to stimulate contractions and the placenta is delivered. Menopause is the cessation of ovarian activity and diminished hormone production that occurs at about age 50. The menopause is usually diagnosed if absence of menses, amenorrhea, has persisted for one year. Climacteric is the period in which symptoms of approaching menopause occur, is also known as change of life or climacteric. There are several symptoms. Hot flashes, vaginal drying, and thinning. Thinning is the vaginal atrophy as estrogen levels fall. The treatment for menopause is hormone replacement therapy, HRT. This is used to treat vaginal atrophy and porous bones osteoporosis, and it is believed to play a role in heart attack prevention and the increased uh, risk of breast cancer with long-term use. That is the warning. Medical word elements. Amnio. Amnio means amniotic sac. Amniocentesis is the transabdominal puncture of the amnio sac. Cervic means neck or cervix uteri. So cervicitis means inflammation of the cervix, uterine cervix. Corp or vagin means vagina. So corposcopy is the visual examination of the vagina. Galact, lact means mean milk. Galactoseal is the cystic tumor of the female breast. Gynec means woman, so gyneco gynecologist is a physician specializing in treating disorders of the female reproductive system. Hysteria means uterus. Hysterectomy is the surgical removal of the uterus. Mam or must, they mean breast. So mammogram is the radiograph of the breast. Must, must. Topexy is a surgical fixation of the breast. Mastectomy means the removal of the breast. Mens means mens. Menorrhagia is excessive amount of menstrual flow. Metri utero means utero. Metro means utero. Net means birth. So prenatal means occurring before birth. Ovo or ovary means ovary. Perine means perineum. Sulfing means fallopian tube. So sulfingoplasty is the surgical repair of a fallopian tube. Archi means beginning. So menarche is the first menstrual period. Cesis means pregnancy. Pseudocesis is the condition in which a woman believes she is pregnant when she is not. This is also called the first pregnancy. Gravida means pregnant woman. Multigravida is the woman who has been pregnant more than once. Para means to bear. Nolli para means the woman who has never produced a viable offspring. Sulfing means fallopian tube. Tube. So hemosulfing is the collection of blood in a fallopian tumor. Tosia means labor. This tosia is the difficult childbirth. Virgin means turning. Ritual virgin is tipping back of an organ. Ante means before, in front of. Ante virgin is the tipping forward of an organ. This means difficult. Dysmenorrhea is the pain associated with menstruation. Endo, in. Multi means many. Multipara means woman who has delivered more than one viable infant. 
post after postnatal means occurring after birth. Primi means first. Primi gravida is a woman during her first pregnancy. Pathology. The female productive disorders are caused by infection, injury, or hormone dysfunction. The signs and symptoms commonly associated with the sexually transmitted disease, disease are pain, itching, lesions, and discharge. Gynecology is the branch of medicine concerned with diseases of the female reproductive organs and the breast. Obstetrics is the branch of medicine that manages the health of a woman and her fetus during pregnancy, childbirth, and the puerperium. The physician who simultaneously practices these specialties is called an obstetrician and gynecologist. Menstrual disorders are usually caused by hormonal dysfunction or pathological conditions of the uterus. There are three, uh, several disorders, like menstrual pain and tension, dysmenorrhea, irregular uterine bleeding, metrorrhagia, profuse or prolonged bleeding. They are menorrhagia or uh, it is menorrhagia or hypomenorrhea. PMS is the premenstrual syndrome. This is a disorder with signs and symptoms that range from complaints of headache and fatigue to mood changes, anxiety, depression, uncontrolled crying, spells, and water retention. It occurs several days before the onset of menstruation and ends when menses begins or a short time after and appears to be related to hormones. Endometriosis is the presence of functional endometrial tissue in areas outside the uterus. This shows the endometriosis. Okay, so you can see endometrial tissue outside the endometrium. So the red spots are the uh, sites or uh, positions of the endometriosis. Perineum, vulva, uh, ovary, umbilicus, pelvic colon, and so on. PID, pelvic inflammatory disease is a general term for inflammation of the uterus, fallopian tubes, ovaries, and adjacent pelvic structures. And usually, PID is caused by bacterial infection. Two of the most common causes of PID are gonorrhea and chlamydia, both of which are sexually transmitted diseases. Unless treated promptly, PID may result in scarring of the narrow fallopian tubes and of the ovaries, causing sterility. Vaginitis. The vagina is generally resistant to infection because of the acidity of vaginal secretions. But occasionally, localized infections and inflammations occur from viruses, bacteria, or yeast. So if confined to the vagina, it is called vaginitis. There are several symptoms, Geni genital itching, foul smelling, vaginal discharge, painful intercourse. Two of the most common types of vaginitis are candidiasis and trichomoniasis. Candidiasis, or aka moniliasis, which is caused by candida albicans, which is yeast that is present as part of the normal flora of the vagina. Maybe candidiasis can occur by the use of steroid therapy, diabetes, or pregnancy. The treatment is uh, to use antifungal agents. Trichomoniasis is caused by the protozoan Trichomonas vaginalis. This is one of the most common causes of sexually transmitted lower 
genital tract infections. Also, venereal disease is any of several contagious diseases acquired as a result of sexual activity with an infected partner. There are three, 20 different STDs, sexually transmitted disease, of which the newest and most serious one is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, AIDS. But until recently, gonorrhea and syphilis were the most common STDs. But over the past few decades, chlamydia has become the most widespread STD. The current STDs of medical concern are gonorrhea, syphilis, chlamydia, genital herpes, genital warts, and trichomoniasis. First, gonorrhea is caused by the bacterium Neisseria gonorrhea and involves the mucosal surface of the genital urinary tract and possibly the rectum and pharynx. May be acquired through sexual intercourse and through orogenital and anogenital contact. The most common symptom is a greenish yellow cervical discharge. The most common sign of gonorrhea in males is a discharge of pus from the penis. And there are also other signs and symptoms, ureteritis, dysuria, cystitis, arthritis. Both sex partners must be treated because the infection cannot recur. And syphilis, this is less common than gonorrhea but the more serious of the two diseases. This is caused by bacterium Treponema pallidum. Chancre is a primary sore developing at the point where the bacteria enter the body. This is an ulcerative sore with hard edges that contains contagious organisms for 10 days to 3 months. If left untreated, the end result is a systemic infection that commonly leads to blindness, insanity, and eventual death. Chlamydia is caused by the bacterium Chlamydia trachomatis. In women, uh, symptoms are mucopurulent discharge and the subsitis. In men, the, it is associated with the whitish discharge from the penis that may lead to ureteritis or epididymitis. Genital herpes causes red blister-like painful lesions that closely resemble the common fever blister or cold sore that appears on the lips and around the mouth. The genital herpes uh, caused by herpes simplex virus type 2 and oral herpes is caused by HSP-1. Genital warts, aka condylomas, it is caused by the human papilloma virus. HPV infection linked to 80% of all causes of invasive cervical cancer. They are. Thus, women who have been diagnosed with HPV infection are urged to have pap smear every six months after diagnosis. Trichomoniasis is caused by the protogen trichomonas vaginalis. I previously explained this one. Uterine myoma, these are benign tumors, more commonly myomas. About 30% to 40% of all women develop slowly between ages 25 and 40, usually asymptomatic. But when present, menorrhage, backache, constipation, and urinary symptoms can occur. The treatment depends on their size and location. Usually, there is no treatment. Breast cancer. The two most common forms of cancer involving the female reproductive system are breast cancer and cervical cancer. Breast cancer is associated with ovarian hormonal function, a family history of the disease, and possibly the use of HRT, hormone replacement therapy. 
The uh, cervical cancer affects women between ages 40 and 49. We can uh, use uh, pap smear test for the diagnosis of early diagnosis of cervical cancer. This is a cytological examination before the disease becomes clinically evident. Diagnostic, symptomatic, and related terms. Okay. Uh, next, in the next video, I'm going to talk about the remaining. See you again.